This video is sponsored by OWC. OnePlus is a company known for releasing smartphones with some flagship specs and features at a much cheaper price than the competition. This year, OnePlus launched its OnePlus 8 lineup, which consists of the OnePlus 8 and the OnePlus 8 Pro. And so in this video, we're gonna get my first impressions of the Pro model and see how it stacks up against Apple's iPhone 11 Pro Max. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications whenever we share a video. For those looking for the best value, that's likely the OnePlus 8 rather than the Pro model that we're gonna feature here. And if you want to see us do a comparison between that lower cost model and something like the iPhone 11, go ahead and let us know in the comments down below. But for this video, we're comparing the two premium models in the OnePlus and iPhone lineups. For reference, the OnePlus model that we are using in this video is the model that starts at $899 and offers users 8 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigs of internal storage. It also exclusively comes in this absolutely stunning glacial green colorway, as OnePlus will call it. But if you want more power and storage, there are two 12 gigabytes of RAM model with 256 gigs of storage available in both black and blue. And those devices are priced at $999. The cheapest iPhone 11 Pro Max model is $200 more expensive than the 8 Pro that we have here. And it only offers 64 gigs of internal storage. To bump up to something more comparable, the middle tier iPhone 11 Pro Max model, which is the one that we're going to use in this video, that has 256 gigs of internal storage, and that would be your best option in my opinion. And that starts at $1,250. So something to keep in mind as I move along throughout and give you more points on each phone, just keep in mind those price points. There's no denying that both phones are beautifully designed and they feel incredibly premium, especially when you're holding and using them throughout your everyday use. OnePlus borrowed a page from Apple with the frosted glass back on the 8 Pro, and I absolutely love it. One thing I I wish Apple would borrow from OnePlus are the color options. Now with the iPhone 11, there are a bunch of different colors, but for the pro models, Apple just seems to stick with the kind of straight laced, no nonsense type colors. And there's really no reason why the fun colors cannot be migrated over to that pro lineup. Apple branched out a little bit this year with the forest green colorway, but this glacial green just looks a lot better in my opinion, kind of borders around a teal color and it's beautiful. I'm not a fan of the huge camera bumps on either phone, so don't take this as a slight towards any particular brand. I really don't understand why we need such massive camera bumps for these systems. Now I'm assuming it's because there's a lot of hardware in there and they have to figure out a way, but LG was able to figure out a way to make their flagship phones have recessed or flat designs on the back and still pack some pretty good camera systems back there. So I think these camera bumps are getting a little insane. While OnePlus's bump looks a little more aesthetically pleasing to me, it's an absolute nightmare laying flat on the table without a case. Table wobble is very serious with the 8 Pro more so than on the iPhone, but obviously a case on both phone fixes this issue, kind of makes them blend in a bit, so it's really not a huge deal, but it is something to point out. Another feature that I really love on the OnePlus 8 Pro is something that they've been doing for a while and that they've definitely borrowed from Apple, and that is the alert slider. And while Apple has had it on every phone since its inception, it only toggles from silent or vibrate to alerts. There's no all three modes where you can go silent and vibrate or you can have alerts on. Now, like I said, OnePlus borrowed this idea, but they took things one step further, giving you three notches or three different levels to switch from. So you have completely silent, you have vibrate, and then you have your ringer mode on, and whatever volume you set it at is what it's going to ring at. It's a small but nice touch in my opinion. The display on the OnePlus 8 Pro is also fantastic. It's vibrant and color accurate and can be customized to your liking if you think it's leaning more towards one way or another. Maybe that's too much saturation or not enough, etc. You can customize it to do whatever you want it to do. For me personally, I thought Samsung always made the best looking displays for its devices with Apple being a close second. And while I do know that a lot of these manufacturers, Samsung especially, they make displays for a lot of other companies and they borrow components from each other, I've always preferred how Samsung made their displays first. Then I liked what Apple was doing over the last couple of years when they switched to OLED displays. And then OnePlus has been right up there over the past few years. 
this OnePlus 8 Pro's 6.7 inch AMOLED display might be now my new favorite display. On top of its accuracy and vibrancy and just how crisp it is, the 120 hertz refresh rate is an awesome addition. It's something that I have been wanting Apple to implement in the iPhone for a little while now, and more manufacturers are starting to do this. We saw this earlier with the S20 Ultra from Samsung, and while they were one of the first this year, one of the first major um, manufacturers in the US to feature a 120 hertz refresh rate on their display, they limited the quality, the display quality overall to only 1080p. Now, OnePlus allows users to absolutely crush their battery life if they want to by letting you turn on 120 hertz and QHD resolution so that you can take advantage of everything that you might want. And I personally am one of those who does want to have the best resolution and the 120 hertz on at the same time. So it's nice to have that option. Now, there isn't going to be a face unlock that's on par with Apple's Face ID, but the flip side to that is that the notch is just a single hole punch all the way to the left side of the display, which looks a little weird. I don't know if I'd like it more on the right or just in the center like what Samsung did. While it is out of the way, the time and notifications seem to be kind of pushed to the right and it just kind of seems weird. It's a small gripe, so I won't harp on it too much, but Apple's notch is not great, but it does have a lot going on there. So we kind of have to excuse them a little bit because there's a lot of tech that they haven't quite figured out a way to make that notch reduced and have all that stuff there for Face ID. OnePlus has an in-display fingerprint sensor, so they don't really have to rely on having a very secure and stable face unlock. They just use the in-display for biome biometric authentication. It works well enough. You kind of have to pick your preference here. If you like Face ID, you're gonna have a big notch. If you like having a fingerprint sensor, you're gonna have a small cutout and more display. I'm curious which one you prefer, go ahead and let me know in the comments down below, but this is the route that each company has decided to go with. So yeah, as far as design goes, I love the look and feel of the OnePlus 8 Pro, and I think it's just as good, if not better in some areas, than the iPhone 11 Pro Max. My biggest issue with it, to be honest, is the waterfall display or the wrapped edges. Sure, it's nice, I guess, but I'm so over this fad, it's not even funny. Just make displays flat again. You can go edge to edge, but they just don't need to curve or wrap around. I've been having so many accidental touches, it's not even funny. I really hate that feature. It's not a feature in my eyes. I don't know how many of you guys are with me, but let me know in the comments down below. I'm really not a fan. Aside from the 8 Pro's new 120 hertz display, OnePlus finally added wireless charging, a feature that Apple users are just also now starting to get used to over the past few years. And while this feature isn't new to every other Android manufacturer pretty much, in the world by any means, the ability to wirelessly charge your device using OnePlus's new 30 watt fast wireless charger is pretty cool. This means you can charge your device wirelessly from zero to 50% in roughly just under 30 minutes, which is absolutely insane. The downside is if you use any other wireless Qi charger uh, with the 8 Pro, it will only charge at a maximum of five watts and that's pretty slow. Uh, so you don't have to buy this extra 30 watt charger. If you want to fast charge wirelessly, it's probably worth the extra $70. For those of you who are good with wires, the OnePlus 8 Pro packs a 30 watt fast charger inside the box, which is capable of charging from zero to 50 in about 23 minutes. The iPhone 11 Pro Max does come with its own fast charger this year, but only at 18 watts. And even though Apple claims it can still charge from zero to 50% in roughly 30 minutes, you might be thinking that's not a huge difference. You know, there's only seven minutes. Keep in mind that the OnePlus 8 Pro is sporting a significantly bigger battery at 4,500 milliamp hours as compared to the iPhone 11 Pro, which comes in at just under 4,000. It's still early for me to give a definitive claim about battery life, but I'd say both are similar in all around battery life, but I'm using the full QHD resolution with 120 Hertz option. So I do expect it to die pretty quickly in comparison. So moving on to cameras, and this is traditionally where OnePlus tends to fall behind, at least over the last few years. According to other reviewers out there, and I'm saying this because I have only had this phone for a couple of days, and I'm staying home just like everyone else in the world, so I really haven't had that much time to fully test out this camera. And my subjects for my pictures have been pretty limited to what or who is in my house. So I can't give a full comparison quite yet. And if you guys want to see a just dedicated video of these two phones, just the cameras, let me know in the comment section down below. 
but I was able to take a few pictures using the OnePlus 8 Pros, 48 megapixel wide, 48 megapixel ultra wide, 8 megapixel telephoto, and then the 5 megapixel depth camera, and put it up against Apple's three 12 megapixel wide, ultra wide, and telephoto lenses. And so here are some of those results that you're seeing right now. Most of the images that you see here are shot at 12 megapixels because that is the default setting on the OnePlus 8 Pro. Unless noted in the corner where you see 48 megapixels, you actually have to go in and enable that feature. Uh, it's not always on, and it's not always the best option for specific subjects and images, so something to keep in mind. But early results to me, and according to other people out there who've had the phone longer, it seems as if OnePlus has improved its cameras this year, and it's no longer that far behind the competition. I do think I prefer the iPhone's more natural looking images that you get out of it. And I do think the iPhone is doing a better job in some instances with portrait mode, but I'm pretty impressed with what I'm seeing out of the 8 Pro so far. I will say with portrait mode on the 8 Pro in some scenarios, it kind of looked as if the lighting was kind of messing with the images or OnePlus was trying to overcompensate and kind of smooth out some skin. I'm not totally sure but the light just looks as if it's providing a weird filter over the whole picture in general. I don't know, it's early. It wasn't happening in all pictures, maybe just this specific light source that was happening. Uh, but I just wanted to kind of point that out. I need to do more tests, but that was the case with some of these portrait mode photos. I'm not gonna touch on performance and software too much because I feel like at this point in life, it's really hard to do a full on comparison between two phones that run two completely different operating systems. I've just kind of given up on that point. I'm just gonna tell you what features you get, what the price is and cameras, because if you're really into cameras and you really take pictures with your phone, you don't care about the operating system, then you wanna know which you know phone has the best camera. But in terms of performance, obviously most of these phones are gonna perform very well. They have the best specs that you can get for each device, so that's not a problem. And then ecosystem right now, given my current situation and the level in which I'm tied down to Apple's ecosystem, I just prefer iOS because it makes life easier for me. But I do really love Android's level of customization and I love OnePlus's implementation of Android because it's a lot more like stock Android or what Google puts on its Pixel phones. So obviously, again, it's really just gonna come down to your preference as it always does. If you're someone out there who doesn't have a preference in OS, then take a look at what I just laid out for you. The performance of both phones is great. They both look and feel excellent, but OnePlus offers a few exclusive features that the iPhone just doesn't have at this moment in time. And it's anywhere from $200 to $550 cheaper than the iPhone 11 Pro Max. So again, just, Keep in mind all of the things that were laid out, and if you're making a decision on either one, just kind of review those facts and, of course, your budget. I would love to know your opinion. Let's just for a minute put aside ecosystem and personal bias. It's kind of hard to make any arguments against the OnePlus 8 Pro, am I right? I don't know. Let me know in those comments down below. Also, before we end today's video, I want to give you more information about today's sponsor, OWC. OWC offers a wide range of products for your Mac, like internal hard drives and SSDs, memory, Thunderbolt 3 docks, etc. With a lot of us working from home these days, OWC has the perfect tools to help maximize your work from home setups, like the Thunderbolt 3 docks for charging your Mac and adding options to plug in all of your peripherals and accessories. There's lightning fast SSD external drives like the Envoy Pro EX, and one of my personal favorite devices, the USB-C travel dock. Now, even though we're not gonna be doing a whole lot of traveling these days, you can make your setup more portable throughout your house with this five port dock that plugs directly into your MacBook and expands your setup in more ways than ever before. Visit the link in the description down below for more information regarding these products and to see everything else OWC has to offer. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you around in the next video.